Hello, and welcome to Connected with Latham, where we discuss ideas, legal developments, and business trends shaping the global economy. In this episode, we explore the latest in short tech trends and regulatory developments impacting the sector. I'm Beatrice Lowe, a corporate M&A partner in our London office, and I'm here with the fabulous Xing Lo, a partner in our emerging companies practice group. And we are joined by one of our resident fintech regulatory gurus, Gabriel Lakeman. Hello. Hello. Great, welcome. So to start off with, just to set the scene, and also for our audience members who might not be so familiar with the industry, what actually is in short tech? What is it? When we use it to describe startups, I think we mean companies who use technology to disrupt the traditional insurance model. Gabe, what about, what do you think? I think it's always useful to give some examples here. So just to give an example of that, you know, we've recently been working with a firm that leverages big data and AI to reduce expenses. So showing how an insure tech can offer more affordable insurance to consumers who fall outside typical risk profiles. I've got another example. Um, one of the companies that we work with use tech solutions to streamline the insurance claims processes and therefore offer a better user experience with the aim of ultimately reducing the cost for the end user. And I guess there are also the traditional insurance companies who, as a result of what we're seeing with the insure tech startups, are really looking at developing and adapting their own tech offerings and solutions in order to stay competitive. Yeah, and we're also seeing that with some of our established fintech clients who are looking to expand and provide insurance products alongside the rest of their products offering. Right. So there are actually quite a range of players in this market. Xing, what sort of activity are you seeing in this space? We've seen plenty of activity in this space in the past few years. In fact, in the first half of last year, 38% of the funding rounds were very sizable. Um, startups in that space were raising over $100 million in equity financing. But unfortunately, with most sectors, um, we have seen a slowdown in M&A and funding activities over the last six months. I do think I'm an optimist, so looking forward, I, I, re I expect the insure tech sector to be resilient. Yeah, and I absolutely share that optimism, Shane. I think one reason for that is you can see there's a lot of room for insure techs to take market share. And a lot of the companies and clients that we're working with, we can see them finding success if they're focusing on penetrating new markets or using new tech-enabled distribution channels to service new customers. So there appears to be plenty of opportunities in the market. And you know, as the industry remains quite fragmented, I'm also an optimist, and I think we're likely to see a lot more M&A activity as well. You know, for example, the traditional insurers may be looking to acquire insure tech startups, or as Gabe mentioned, some of the established fintech players might be looking to expand into insurance products by acquiring um, another insure tech, or the insure techs might be consolidating amongst themselves. So lots of acti potential activity there. Um, however, you know, insurance is a highly regulated space. So for any of these players to achieve a successful deal, I think one of the key areas that they'll need to focus on is to understand and navigate the regulatory aspects for the insurance tech businesses. Yeah, and, and obviously understanding the regulatory landscape is, is pretty central to this sector and, and differentiates itself from other tech and startup areas. I mean, our traditional insurer clients and some of the established fintechs are very familiar with operating as regulated entities, but there are a number of recent developments that all insure techs and investors and acquirers of insure techs should be mindful of. So just focusing on the UK to start with, you know, we're seeing the FCA make recent enhancements to their appointed representatives regime and tight focusing on tightening up provision of regulatory hosting services which are you know, common mechanism we see for new entrants looking to provide regulated services before getting their own license. Similarly, the FCA's new consumer duty imposes a wide range of outcomes-based requirements, and they particularly impact in insurtechs, given insurtechs focus on retail client base and online distribution models. And more broadly, you know, we're continuing to see global regulators focus on requirements around outsourcings, which again impacts new entrants looking to rely on outsourced service providers or new entrants looking to partner with established players. As the insure tech sector is heavily regulated, um, the barriers of entries are high for new players. 
investors investing in this space are very aware of this. Um, when when we act on deals where investors are looking to invest in a startup, when they assess this market, in addition to considering whether the market is sufficiently large and underserved, they also look at whether or not a particular insure tech startup needs to obtain its own regulatory license, or can it operate as a appointed representative and the costs associated with that. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is whether or not there are any regulatory tailwinds which could result in uncertainty in the space that the startup is trying to service. Yeah, and we're seeing these regulatory issues coming up all the time in diligence. So especially when you're looking at emerging companies looking to scale up their operations and potentially take a slightly different approach to regulatory compliance from when they were a much smaller operation. Mm -hmm, right. And so these are the types of issues um, I mentioned as that do require quite careful consideration and navigation. But I think if you can get through that, there's actually quite a lot of opportunities there for both investors and operators in this market. And we at Latham are certainly looking forward to continuing to support our clients in this area. Shing, Gabe, thank you so much for such an interesting discussion. It's been fun. It's been our pleasure. Yeah, it's been great and looking forward to the next one. Thank you. And to our listeners, thank you for joining us for this episode of Connected with Latham. Please do stay tuned for more episodes coming soon, where we will discuss other key topics and issues impacting insurtech market participants. You can subscribe and listen to new and archived episodes of Latham's podcasts on LW.com, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you normally get your podcasts. If you would like more information about the topics we discussed in this podcast, please do email us from the links located in the show description. We hope you can join us again next time. Thanks very much. This podcast is provided as a service of Latham & Watkins LLP. Listening to this podcast does not create an attorney-client relationship between you and Latham and & Watkins LLP, and you should not send confidential information to Latham & Watkins LLP. While we make every effort to assure that the content of this podcast is accurate, comprehensive, and current, we do not warrant or guarantee any of those things. And you may not rely on this podcast as a substitute for legal research and or consulting a qualified attorney. Listening to this podcast is not a substitute for engaging a lawyer to advise you on your individual needs. Should you require legal advice on the issues covered in this podcast, please consult a qualified attorney. Under New York's Code of Professional Responsibility, portions of this communication contain attorney advertising. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Results depend upon a variety of factors unique to each representation. Please direct all inquiries regarding the conduct of Latham & Watkins attorneys under the New York's disciplinary rules to Latham & Watkins LLP, 1271 Avenue of the Americas, New York, New York, 10020, phone number 1212-906-1200.